couple announcements this morning. Um, first, we welcome back with us the Reverend Beth Perry, who has been with us a few times. Uh, her information is in the back of your um, bulletin. She is with the United Church of Christ, pastoral counselor for Chelsea Community Church, a church consultant and online trainer, and faculty for the University of, faculty member for the University of Phoenix and the College of New York um, Welcome back, Professor Perry. And um, we have a lovely announcement regarding four families who are blessing us with their presence and coming here to be baptized at Church in the Gardens. Um, and I hope that I pronounced the names correctly. The Flatter family, the Mapudi Motion family, the Bam Burke family, and the Pilar family, um, who are sitting here and here. Welcome and thank you for allowing us to be your church of baptism and we hope to see you again. Um, if you drove, please remember to get a parking pass and you can get one in that little narthex, which is the space between the front door and that door right there. If you don't get one, you can be booted, which is a serious drag. So please try to, to remember if you need to get one. Um, moving on to other announcements, we have, ah, here we go, um, the search committee. And if you look at your bulletin, you'll see the search committee has questions for you, please. Focus on those if you are able and give them your response. Um, Musica um, <coughs> Regina, there you go, um, will be hosting a concert um, on the 19th. Please um, take note of that. Um, and also flowers on the 20th in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King's day. Uh, okay. Now, are there any other announcements that people would like to, to make? No? Oh, all right. So Betty Sheets fell and um, had to be hospitalized temporarily, and she'd like to have people call and, um, you know, please pray for her. She's a wonderful lady and been a member of the church for many years, uh, and of one of the, the board of deacons. Okay. So I think that's all for the email. Okay. All right, so please stand for our call to worship. The uh, call to worship comes from a poem called Baptism. I'll read the regular print and you will read the dark. Love's hidden thread has drawn us to the font. Calling the water, fire, darkness, pain. Calling us to the light for which we long. Again, the breath of God is on the waters. And we rejoice at the font. Let us sing. Hymn 238 in the green handle, Wash of God our sons and daughters. <laughs>
were the parents and the godparents of Kendrick, Johanna, Justice, and Maximus to please bring them forward. We're going to ask you to kind of line up around this way, facing over here. Semi-circle semi around that way. And then you can probably all see me, and you can probably all be over there. But, yeah. <laughs> So you can all see me and people can see you because you're the important stars on the show today. You and, you and God, right? right? The church welcomes children just as our head, Jesus Christ, welcomes them. We have in the scriptures a story about people who were bringing children to Jesus that he might touch them and the disciples would rebuke those people. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And Jesus took them in his arms and laid his hands upon them and blessed them. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of God's love that holds and enfolds us all. In so much as the good news is that we can live as God's beloved children in the way of Jesus is not only for us but also for our children. Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of their acceptance into the care of the body of Christ, the sign and seal of their participation in God's forgiving and healing reign, and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. So parents, I ask of you, do you desire to have your child baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, we do. Will you encourage your child to turn from the ways of separation and chaos and turn to the way of seeking the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, answer, we will, with the help of God. Will you teach your child that they may follow in the saving and healing way of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, we will, with the help of God. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow with these as a disciple of Christ, to help them be a faithful member of the body of Christ, by celebrating Christ's presence, by receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit, by embodying God's reign in all the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian church so that they may affirm his baptism? And again, if so, answer, we do with the help of God. And Godparents, do you, as Godparents, promise diligently to journey with this child and these parents in the fulfillment of their covenant that this child be instructed in the ways of Christ? If so, answer, we do. And Congregation, do you, members of this church, as the whole church of Christ, receive these children into your love and care? And do you promise that, so far as in you lies, you will uphold and encourage the parents in the fulfillment of this covenant? We if do. so, answer, we do. We do. Amen. Let us pray. Do you, oh, excuse me. We thank you, gracious God, for the gift of creation called forth by your saving word. Before the world had shape and form, your spirit moved over the waters. Out of the waters of the deep, you formed the firmament and brought forth the earth to sustain all life. In the time of Moses, your people Israel passed through the Red Sea waters from slavery to freedom and crossed the flowing Jordan to enter the Promised Land. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus Christ, who was nurtured in the water of Mary's womb. Jesus was baptized by John in the water of the Jordan, he came living water to the woman at the well of Samaria, washed the feet of the disciples, and sent them forth to baptize all the nations by water and the Holy Spirit. Bless by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water. By your Holy Spirit, save those who confess the name of Jesus Christ, that sin may have no power over them. Create new life in the one baptized this day that they may rise in Christ, whose name, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let's see, shall we go um, alphabetically, or first family standing here? <laughs> 
why don't you come this way and remind me, this is Max's. Do you call this child? Maximus Perenna Pelet, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's join in prayer first. 
it is printed in the uh, insert in your bulletin. <laughs> we give thanks to you, O oh God, for the gift of these children. We pray that they would grow in the way of Jesus, knowing your gift of abundant and eternal love, and choosing to live as your gift in the world. We ask that these children would know more and more your tender mercy, your steadfast love, your healing power, and all the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We pray for their family, and this, that we will be guided by you to teach, to embody, and to love it in the way of truth and life of Jesus. That we, and we will support more and challenge these children to live as your love of God. We give, we give thanks that you baptize us in your spirit that unites us as the body of Christ to offer our hope and healing in your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now I invite you to welcome these children into the, uh, the congregation, into the body of Christ, to I your applause.
I am not worthy to untie the shawl of his sandals. He will baptize you the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chafe he will burn with unquenchable fire. <clears throat> now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was open. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him and bodily formed like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved, with whom I am well This is the word of God. Thanks.
Bible and reads it every night, you usually make markings in it as well. And I, I went looking for those, but these were newish Bibles, so they didn't have all those decades of, uh, of reading in them. But there were two pages that were marked. And when I turned to those pages, both of them gave me a shiver. One of them was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for a song that's the basis of a classic song that my husband sings all the time. It's this great big, huge, beautiful song, and, and I can't read the words to that song without hearing my husband's voice in my ears. So that was the first kind of shiver. And then the other was this reading today about the floods and the fires, this reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, He created you, O Jacob, formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I called you by name, you're mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and the rivers, and they shall not overwhelm you. And when the water and fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. It was a scripture that my spiritual director had offered to me for prayer. He said, read it and put your name in where Jacob and Israel is. Put Elizabeth and Beth and read it as if God's saying it to you. And it was such a powerful way to read that scripture. I invite you to do that someday. But I had used it over and over again. I did it in worship, my own prayer life. I did it with people who were getting married and inserted the couple's names into that reading. I had that scripture memorized. <laughs> I didn't even have to look at the page when I opened my grandfather's Bible up. I could recite it, even in King James. <coughs> they were really unfamiliar territory to find them in this difficult person's Bible. And I had to wonder how this man whose life was so plagued with floods and fires and burning, and how he came to treasure those words so much. How he came to mark them in this really new Bible. I'd have understood it better if it had been that verse you heard about the uh, winnowing fork and the fire and the shaft and the, all of that anger verse in Luke. But instead of unquenchable fire, he marked a page it sounds a lot more like verse, 40, verse 22. You're my child, the beloved. Instead of the angry verses, he marked things that were about love. And I realized that Isaiah is, you'll pass through the waters and they will not overwhelm you. Through the fires, they'll not consume you because you're precious in my sight and honored and I love you. It's a preview of Luke's saying. You are my child, the beloved. And I think that's what my grandfather held on to, that love promised to him. <coughs> that he was a child of God no matter what life threw at him, no matter how difficult life got for him. I think that's true for all of us. I mean, we're all going to have, if we haven't already, some floods and some fires in our life, right? We've all had some challenges. We all do, we all will. That's just the way it is. But like grandfather, we can know that there's a voice that's beyond the water. There's a voice that's beyond the fire. There's a voice that's beyond any problem we might ever have. And it's a voice that says to us, just as it did to Jacob and Israel, you're precious in my sight and I love you. It says to us just like, um, just like uh, Jesus heard in that water of baptism, you're my child, my beloved. It was what these children heard this morning in their baptism. They are precious in God's sight and love by God, by you, their families, by all of us in the church with them. We can mark those words in our Bibles or in our minds. We can hear them over and over, read them over and over again. We can hold on to them in our hearts even when we don't quite live up to them as well as we should. And we can strive to live as people who know they are loved by God. So loved by God that they will share that love with the rest of the world around them. And we can strive in all our personal interactions to do that. And with these children and their families, whether we see them every day, every uh, week, every month, or whether we, we don't see them often, but we can pray for them long distance, whatever the situation is, we can share the knowledge of God's love. And we can share
change the world when we do that. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, you love us. And so the commitment we have to you is to live as people who know that love and share it with others. We give you thanks again for these children who remind us of your baptism and the way in which you poured out your love for us. In that name we pray. Amen. Let us now stand and sing how firm a foundation on the Pilgrim Hymnal, page 372.
silent time in the prayer for that. And then we join together in the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> oh gracious God, through the joys of our lives, through the times of blessing, you are nearby us. You laugh with us and smile with us and hug and kiss with us. You know the joy we have in the love of these families and in the children who are baptized here and in the love that we each have for each other within the body of Christ. At this time, we share with you in our hearts or aloud those moments of joy and blessing. Enjoy and cry with us in sorrow. You wrap your loving arms around us and hold us tight when we need it. And you guide our footsteps towards better days. And now we share with you the concerns of our heart as well. We offer up all these words of our mouth and all these thoughts of our heart to you because we know you are with us. We know that you love us, you hear our prayers, and you answer them. And we pray that we might have ears open to hear those answers. We pray all these things in the name of our Savior who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in
in awe and deeply grateful for the cleansing waters of baptism that you bestow on us. We know that this is your assurance of your eternal protection of us and your eternal love for us. We are often undeserving and irresponsible in our covenant with you. Let us hear you remind us to hold fast in our faith and fear nothing. Help us to follow the example of your Son, Jesus Christ, and to not waver from, but serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.